The result was started in late 2002. We lived in Minnesota. I thought I had a rotator cuff tear. They did an exam of my arm and found a lesion on it. Uh, we ended up coming here to the University of Chicago because my wife had been treated for lung cancer. And uh, Dr. Ferguson hooked us up with Dr. Zimmerman. He uh, interviewed me, set up a plan to treat me, diagnosed me with multiple myeloma. I had radiation treatment on my arm and on my spine. And in November, November 7th of 2003, I had my stem cell transplant. And I've been seeing Dr. Zimmerman since that time. He saved my life. I mean, how can you say, how can you thank somebody that did that? One of the exciting and unique things about myeloma therapy is the way it's just changed over the last uh, two decades. Um, you know, Russ is uh, you know, an exceptional person here, but his story is becoming more and more common as we see patients living longer and longer and longer periods of time here with their myeloma and other diseases. So we've really seen the disease transform here, and it's really patients like Russell here that really kind of. Uh, give me the desire to continue to push on and look for new treatments in uh, the health there. I'm lucky to be born in this generation because 30 years, but 30 years ago, I probably would have had this opportunity. You know, so I'm just pretty fortunate. Even though it was the worst experience for him, it was still a great experience for our family because we really felt like for the first time that things were going to be different and you know that we might actually get through it and the cancer may never come back. So it was very positive here at the university. It was just a whole different thing from the first time we experienced it. It's weird when you become familiar with cancer, you don't realize how many people go through this, you know, until they actually hit you, you know, you might see a commercial on TV, but you don't really pay attention to it until you're actually in it, so, you know, I'm happy, it's a really uplifting feeling to see all these people that made it through and, you know, with their families and stuff and can enjoy life, it's, it's pretty cool. They set up a program for her to prepare her for surgery and not take it to me. When we hear I am humbled by uh, all these people. I'm thankful that the patients show up, that the patients are doing well, and that the patients uh, want to come back. Uh, I think makes me proud of our program and makes me proud of uh, the staff who works on, who work so hard. I'm also humbled by the fact that people have gone through so much and, and really get their life back together and build uh, great lives again. And during that time, my daughter, she was tested and she agreed to do this stem cell transplant, uh, participate, she donated, and, um, and they used a cord to copy her cells. And, um, she was anxious. In fact, I remember her words. It's taking them so long. Let's get the show on the road. <laughs> it wasn't much thought put into it at all. It was just, it, I have to do what I have to do. Um, to, to have the opportunity to give life back to the person who gave it to me. Um, you know, I, I just, I wanted to do it. I didn't even think about it, didn't question, didn't care what the risks were. Just had to do it. It's very war heartwarming. Um, and just to listen to some of the stories that I've all been hearing, and they have some very long-term survival rates, and so it has kind of given me, uh, you know, an outlook that uh, yeah, I may be around a while. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just the little lady, she survived 14 years, and, you know, kind of looking forward to that, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, let me get a napkin and get some more plates over here. Did you want some? I was diagnosed with AML in 2002. Autologous transplant December of 2003, and I asked Dr. Godley, what do they do after transplant, because I started a support group and one of the people there had a transplant at Barnes and they have a huge celebration, and then she said, you really don't have anything, and that's when I started the Bond Link. This is our second annual one. Um, last year was great. And they also take the picture that they take of everybody and put on the transplant floor. And my husband and I talked to one man and he said just seeing that picture gave him a lot of hope. That he knew he could, he could do it. And that's what I wanted, to give somebody else hope. I basically found out May 
18th of 2009. Um, prior to finding out, I I had extreme fatigue. I was just very very tired. I didn't I didn't really know what was going on, and uh, found out my my hemoglobin was very low, and I needed some blood transfusions, and. Uh, found out on May 18th that I had ALL leukemia. Came over to University of Chicago in uh, July of 2009 and uh, had the induction uh, chemotherapy and uh, had my transplant November 17th, 2009 and uh, so far so good. Everything's 100% uh, remission. I think it's nice for the patients to come back and you know interact with their doctors and their nurses and other members of the team um, in a different kind of setting, in a social setting. And um, I think it's also good for their mind and spirit to see that they you know come so far and um, come back to the place where they you know have life-saving treatment. 2007, I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. I never heard of that before. Uh, they wanted to do bone marrow, and I said, multiple myeloma, they said, that's cancer. What's the prognosis? Said, there is no cure. At that point, I gave up hope. But then, my daughter, who started her nursing career here, said to me, Ma, don't give up. We're going to go to the University of Chicago Hospital, and we're going to see what they can do for you. And then I came here for some cell transplant. Okay. Yeah, who was the donor on the... My second? sister was the donor. Your sister? She's not here today. Uh, it was a very difficult uh, process going through because my sister lost her husband uh, years ago from cancer. Um, so she's the only parent to her two children. And uh, so it made it a little di difficult. It was very difficult going through it with her, you know, having to be the donor. Although the process is fairly simple. Um, but it still, you know, was nerve-wracking, so... Yeah, what do you say to your sister for, for being the donor? As many thanks as you can. There's, there's no words in my mind for it, you know, that she saved my life, so... Not everyone is able to celebrate as you are, and our goal is to increase that number until everyone who gets a transplant attends the meeting and we have to move into the soldier field. We put them in remission, and after that they um, did the stem cell transplant in 2005. And okay. right now he's only sees the doctor once a year, he doesn't take any medication, doesn't get any blood work done, just sees the doctor once a year. Wow. Unrelated donor, and he hasn't come forth at all yet. So. Hmm. And, uh, had you heard of the transplant procedure before uh, it I was I think offered? we'd heard of it, but back when I was originally diagnosed, my understanding was that a person that was 50 years old or older, they wouldn't do a transplant thing because it was fairly new stuff. Going on. But 13 years later, they did it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's worked extremely well. I think it's great myself. Um, I've kind of looked for a way to reach out to other people and let them know that hey, there is there is life after after cancer, um, and this is a good way to do that. I think. Come, come together with the people here at the hospital. It was really. A miracle that they could do this. My doctors were wonderful. I would recommend that if someone was given that diagnosis and I was very much scared, it was worth doing. Because I've seen my two daughters raised and I'm a grandmother now and it made me strong enough to actually babysit for them. So I say thank you again and for all the wonderful people here at all times. This is a wonderful event for our for our patients but also for ourselves. It's a way to kind of step back from the day-to-day -day small day-to-day uh, -day difficulties and really uh, celebrate what, what um, has been achieved and, and be thankful for it.